In today's news, new kiosks is at airport to expedite process for citizens when returning to the BVI. The BVI Film Commission to implement a registry of local film production companies. Construction to start on the new Jaspandai Primary School. That project is said to cost some $4.3 million and has been awarded to Quality Construction Limited. The party system has failed Virgin Islanders, says the Honorable Carbon Malone. We'll be right back after a quick commercial break. Yo, everything good, Dad? Bye. This thing got me one way, Daddy. What do you mean? Ever since I hook up with this thing, I can't eat, I can't sleep. This is the first thing I touch it when I reach home. What do you mean? Hey, this thing like you, you know? Dad, this thing got me staying home, keeping out that trouble me. What's your name is? She? I talk about my CCT life. Don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Come to CCT today and sign up for CCT Live to access over 80 channels. CCT Live, bring it home. One month free trial, turn into five. Five months turn into, well, you know I huff. I watch him ball. I even watch him football. Dad. Nickelodeon, Paw Patrol, I am Hook, Hook I tell you. Welcome everybody, it's Friday, August 26, 2022. I'm Ron Grant coming to you live and direct from Tortola in the Virgin Islands. A happy Friday to one and all. I want to take this opportunity to thank you so much for tuning in. Beginning our newscast on the local scene here in the British Virgin Islands, Territorial at-large representative, the Honorable Carvin Malone, has lamented that one of the main hindrances to the BVI's political advancement and progress to independence is the belief in the minds of Virgin Islanders that they cannot trust themselves to lead the territory and are in need of outside assistance at every turn. Malone made the comment while speaking about the One BVI Agenda as a guest on Honestly Speaking radio program with host Claude Skelton Klein. If you ask somebody tomorrow, what, what are their basic concerns in terms of governance of our people, by our people. We have allowed the narrative, and maybe we ourselves have allowed it. We have allowed the narrative to say that you can't trust any of us. Mm -hmm. So you have to be careful not to allow us to manage us. Okay. We have to depend on somebody else. We have allowed that narrative. Mm -hmm. The same territory, the same territory that, that got us all of the infrastructural development, all of what we enjoy today. Mm -hmm. Not because billions of dollars were sent from anywhere, but through our own deliberate judgments, we were able to build the road networks and build the primary schools and build the high schools and build the college and build the hospital and we're gonna we're gonna have a hundred years of um, particular you know hospital in terms of the structure and uh, particular healthcare. Mm -hmm. Some might say we need to come a long way in terms of the administration, build social security, build all of these networks, mm -hmm. and it's the same people, others that tell you don't trust, mm -hmm. and our people have bought into that. Although Malone agreed when asked by Klein if he believed that the United Kingdom was at some level to blame for crafting and communicating this narrative of non-trustworthiness in the territory, he also stressed that the situation of the day is mostly the fault of Virgin Islanders themselves. We ourselves are to blame for a lot of this. So we are, we, we are complicit yes. in the narrative that is taking place. That's correct. And what, and what makes us used... complicit? Our silence or what is it that's making us complicit? Well, what's making us complicit is the fact that um, all of what our people demand, mm -hmm. the accountability, transparency, and all of this good governance uh, that, of, you know, of which the world speak about, folks are concerned about it. Mm -hmm. And we have issues that we must correct. But what I have said over and over, it does not, Right. In fact, let me pull one of your numbers. Come close. <laughs> Closer. Yes. Good. What we ourselves have been involved in does not rise to the level of where our constitution has to be suspended, rejected in part or in hold. Malone said that the constitution of the Virgin Islands was built by Virgin Islanders and its people, and therefore they are best fit to correct it and move forward. He also added that a major task dealt to persons of authority is the breaking of the narrative of non-trustworthiness towards local leadership. Continuing on on the local scene, 
Over in Joss Van Dyke, the construction of the new Joss Van Dyke Primary School is set to commence soon after Quality Construction Limited was awarded a contract valuing some $4.3 million to construct the long overdue facility on the sister island. Chief Executive Officer of Quality Construction Limited, Mr. Roy Garraway, signed the contract on Thursday, August 25th during a small ceremony to commemorate the occasion. Director of Procurement at the Recovery and Development Agency, Mr. John Primo, revealed that a total of six qualification and applicants submitted to the project. The procurement of, for the construction of the Just for Night Primary School was done in accordance with the RDA's procurement policy and general procurement procedures using the selection method of international competitive bidding. This procurement method provided for the publication of a pre-qualification notice in the United Nations Development Business, the local newspapers, as well as the RDA and GIS websites. Six pre-qualification applications were received, one from St. Lucia and five from the British Virgin Islands. And following a rigorous shortlisting process to determine the firm's capabilities to undertake this project, invitations to tender were issued to three shortlisted firms to submit detailed technical and financial proposals. At the submission deadline, three tenders were received and detailed evaluations were done by a panel of evaluators consisting of members from within the RD and the Ministry of Education. Subsequently, it was determined that Quality Construction Limited was the highest ranked tenderer and the evaluation panel recommended this firm for the award of contract to the value of $4,333,743.86. The RDA would like to congrat congratulate Mr. Roy Garway of Quality Construction Limited for being awarded this contract. Minister for Education, the Honorable Cherie B. De Castro, said it was a day of pride and relief on the sister island as the new primary school project is one that has been long awaited. Today is a day of pride. It's also a day of relief because I believe this day has been long awaited. Uh, we are truly grateful for the many steps and strides that has allowed us to come to this point. Uh, to the many partners um, who would have assisted in ensuring that interim measures were put in place and continue to be put in place for the school uh, to function while we were able to put uh, the requisite procurement steps in place to get to this point today. We want to give you a heartfelt thank you. I want to acknowledge the Just Van Dyke community who is present here today, and I want to thank you sincerely for your patience. Um, truly, I believe that you have been extremely patient with us. You have been understanding and we cannot take that for granted given all that you have had to deal with over the last few years. So I just want to say that I am truly excited for this and I believe that this is another step in the right direction as we seek to advance education in this territory. Meanwhile, representative for the second electoral district, the Honorable Melvin Mitch Turnbull assured the Joss Van Dyke community that the school project is one that will not stall like some of the others that have in the past. I remember there was a sign there for a community center and it never happened. They break ground and they break ground. They had ceremony and food and nothing ever happened. But this time around, it's about action. And it is about building a school that is going to be efficient and effective to serve the community of Just Van Dyke, not just in the school setting, but they, from a community outreach program, from a resource center capability, it is going to be just that for the people of Just Van Dyke here in Great Harbor. Chief Executive Officer of the RDA, Mr. Anthony McMaster, assured residents that the school will be completed in time for the September 2023 school year. Viewers, when 284 News returns, the BVI Film Commission to implement a registry for local film production and new kiosks at airport to expedite process for citizens when returning to the British Virgin Islands. We'll be right back after a quick commercial break. You value traditions. Today, you value music. You value education. Family. I love you. <laughs> Service. Thank you. You're welcome love, life. At Popular, we're committed to you and everything our community values. 
for the things you value the most. Count on us. Popular. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There the answer comes. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. watching the news right now. Take, take, take a listen. Topping our newscast today, UFOs seen around Tortola Pear Park. And District 3 residents outraged over no water supply. They simply cannot bathe. These and more stories when 284 News returns. All right, babe, just get some rest. Take to Advil and I'll see you later. Bye. OK, honey, I'll see you later. I love you. It's clear to see that Coconut Lounge is a place to be. The coolest cocktail lounge in the British Virgin Islands. A lounge like no other, with welcoming, professional service, and a breathtaking ambiance. Not forgetting a diverse selection of wines, beers, and signature cocktails. Cozy, comfortable, contemporary. Coconut Lounge at Tortola Pier Park. Visit us today. Viewers, welcome back and thank you so much for sticking with us. Continuing on, effective Tuesday, August 22nd, our local registered film production businesses are encouraged to register their productions with the BVI Film Commission at the BVI Tourist Board. Now these productions include, but are not limited to, music videos, commercials, still photography, television shows, documentaries, and much more. I recently sat down with Film Commissioner Ms. Natalie Hodge to discuss the benefits as well as the importance of registering. She began by providing some background on the role of the BVI Film Commission Office. So the role of the Film Commission Office is to promote the BVI as a film destination. So of course we know it's the BVI Tourist Board and Film Commission. The BVI prim Tourist Board primarily focuses on marketing the destination, the BVI as a, um, a destination, a travel destination. And then the Film Commission, we're responsible for promoting the BVI as a film location. Um, one of our other roles is also to assist with our local media professionals in developing their craft and gaining more experience and expertise in the industry. So we're able to provide advice and support to those um, individuals as well. Ms. Hodge also highlighted the BVI's robust film industry. Film projects in the BVI are confidential until they've completed their project. Um, we've had, we've seen a number of projects such as Victoria's Secret, Sports Illustrated, J. Crew. Um, those companies usually come to the BVI. They're attracted by our beautiful scenery, our beautiful beaches. So a lot of times we get a lot of productions that come to BVI that want to focus on photo shoots and calendar and swimsuit um, projects. So that is what we mainly are known for worldwide. Um, we see a lot of persons coming to BVI who are drawn to the bats. N main main location for photo shoots, the bats. So we are known for photo shoots, um, documentaries, different things like that. Understood. Not 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 the high end movie features that we would like because we're of course we're a small territory, but we do have our little niche that we're um, known for. Additionally, she spoke to the registration process and the importance of production companies registering. The reason we want persons to register is that, again, we provide support and assistance, recommendation, advice to persons in the film industry. Um, just for example, if you have a local production company or a media professional who says, well, I'm off next week, I'm going to do a photo shoot at the BATS. When you register with us, and it's a very simple form, um, it just gives us your name, your contact, where you'll be shooting, what time, um, your production company name, and then we're able to say to you, if you're gonna go over to the BATS on whatever day next week, we're able to say, well, Victoria's Secrets will be there on that day. Perhaps you might wanna go over to Devil's Bay or 
go over to Spring Bay. Um, maybe you have the Copper Mine listed as one of your locations. We can say, well, start at the Copper Mine and then come down to the bats. We're able to give you that advice. Or even in, in the instances of there being a ship in port, because a lot of the tourists do go over to the bats. So we're able to guide you. And we want to make sure that we have a record of what is being filmed in the territory. When we do have incoming productions, we're able to say, um, if you're shooting a commercial, we have a company here that just shot something. We're going to send that over to you. We're going to send you their contact information. And this is twofold because we also want persons to submit their resumes to us. And it's not just producers um, or editors. We're asking for hairstylists, um, wardrobe stylists, animators, makeup artists, send us your updated resume because we're able to say to incoming productions, if you need someone on your crew, you may bring your entire crew. However, you may say, I would hire somebody locally to do makeup or hair. So we're able to shoot them your resume and recommend you, as well as any work that you may have done, your footage, your content. That is again by you registering with us when you are doing your productions as well as submitting your resumes to us. Ms. Hodge also spoke about building a strong relationship with the industry partners across the Virgin Islands. It's not necessary for BVI Landers. However, if you are bringing in someone to assist you in a production, to work with you on a production, then that, those persons coming in require a film permit. Um, there are a number of other permits that they require, such as a work permit, a temporary work permit. We can assist you with obtaining those or a waiver. Um, you would also require a drone permit. Persons might be coming in to fly a drone, and flying a drone in the territory, if you're not a BVI lander, requires obtaining permission from Air Safety Support International, which is ASI, in the UK, as well as the BVI Airports Authority. So they grant that permission and they grant that permit. We don't, um, that's not within our purview. However, we're able to assist you with obtaining that. So our guide provides all that information of what you need to know to apply for the drone permit and for the work permit. Again, that's for individuals or crew that's coming in. And if you are a local production company that is bringing in crew, you must get a film permit for those persons. Um, so again, we have that information that you can email us at info at bvifilm.com and we'll provide you with that guide and also to get the form to register. And again, locals do not need a film permit, but we want to be able to assist you as best as we can in our role. So we're asking that you register your productions as well as send us your resumes so that we can provide them to incoming companies. Of course, to catch the full interview, that is available on all 284 media platforms. Residents holding the British Virgin Islands or United Kingdom passports are now expected to be processed through immigration at a much more efficient pace when returning to the territory through the Terence Villetum International Airport. This follows the launch of automated passport control kiosks by the Immigration Department on Friday. Now, according to information presented in a media release, the kiosks will enable the eligible travelers to scan their passports and respond to entry questions. The system performs a facial recognition verification of the, the travelers, which allows them entry into the territory if successful. Speaking on the initiative was the acting premier at the time, the Honorable Kai Reimer, who said the kiosks are all part of the government's rollout for a e-government initiative. He said we are working with e-government to make these processes efficient, streamlined and online. We want to ensure entering the Virgin Islands is seamless and is a very easy process. Nairam commented on the work by the Immigration Department during the COVID-19 pandemic, adding, and I quote, we are working with e-government to make these processes efficient, streamlined, and online. We want to ensure entering the Virgin Islands is a seamless process. He additionally spoke about the initiative uh, with the permanent secretary in the Premier's office, Mrs. Carolyn stout Igwe. Now, she said the launch of the kiosks is timely in preparing for the next tourist season. She said, we are a tourism destination and we are working hard to ensure that we improve our services as we look forward to the next tourist season. The permanent secretary also explained that since the launch of the Immigration Department's Border Management and E-Visa system on December 1st, 2020, the department has launched different services under the Border Management and E-Visa system with Friday's launching of the kiosks being another phase of the project. She also said the system's next phase sorry, entails the launch of the small vessel and aircraft portal, 
which will allow pre-clearance for private charter vessels, day trippers, and private charter aircrafts. Additionally, she revealed that entry and disembarking uh, cards online processing is underway. She said, and I quote, I hope everyone is as excited as I am and we pray for the Immigration Department as they continue to transform our experience at our borders. That was Mrs. Carolyn Saudigwe. Meanwhile, a Deputy Chief Immigration Officer, Mrs. Anadia deming Hodge, said the eligibility for the use of the kiosk will extend to other nationalities within a future phase of the project. She said, and I quote, this proven technology is widely used throughout the Caribbean region and internationally and is designed to reduce the wait time upon arrival while securing vetting the travelers. Viewers with Tweet for News Return, we're looking at the, of course, VI party system has failed the Virgin Islands, says the Honorable Carbon Malone. There's a reason you get up on a morning. A reason you pick yourself up, start the day. Maybe it's sheer grit. Maybe it's your ethics. Maybe it's because you know people like you are waiting. For people just like you. We all have our reasons. And for Republic Bank, that reason is you. Every little thing. Every big thing. It's all about making a difference in your life. Because after 182 years, if it's one thing we're sure about, is that the difference is you. We're here to help. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284 Media at cctbbi.com. Advertising with us works. The beautiful Virgin Islands, or nature's little secret as some prefer, where the weather stays warm and the drinks stay cold, where men in wigs get their lawyer bills paid by governments and governments lose planes, where walls are built and prisoners escape. You vacation where we suffer. BVI love. Viewers, welcome back. Thank you so much for sticking with us. Local talk show host Claude Skelton Klein is of the opinion that the party system does not meet the needs of the territory and has ultimately failed Virgin Islanders. The party system, uh, in my view, um, is floundering and has faltered, and some may even say have failed the people of these Virgin Islands. At the time of making these comments, Klein was posing a question to his guest, a territorial at large representative. The Honorable Carvin Malone surrounding his views on what could unfold during the 2023 elections. Klein asked Malone if he believes that there would still be a constitution in place at the time of the election or if he saw anything that would impede the territory from having an election by its constitutional due date, to which Malone offered this response. We have, uh, we have a test of the elections in terms of what we have. Uh, the first district that seat will soon be vacated one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And we have to determine whether it's be a by-election, whether they will ask for a general election or a suspension of the constitution in order to get all of it. I am saying that the 49 areas, because there's some who boast that we're well on the way as to appeasing, as to giving in and to making sure that all of what was agreed between the uh, government and the UK is actually um, is actually done. There are a number of measures that have to come to the House of Assembly. One came already. There were amendments to it. The governor has indicated that he's not pleased with the amendments. So he's either going to send it back and it'll have to it'll either be a quote unquote, this is, this doesn't work the fight. So you can go ahead and have everything you want. Hmm. We can't change nothing or it will have a stalemate. Malone lamented, however, that the threat facing the Constitution is not receiving the necessary attention from learned Virgin Islanders who could facilitate educated discourse within the population. 
In the Commission of Inquiry report, it is recommended that certain parts of the Constitution by which errors of government are assigned to elected representatives be suspended, with the Commissioner concluding that the move would be the only way in which the relevant areas could be addressed. Now, according to item 24 of the executive summary, the suspension was dubbed not only warranted but essential if the abuse identified by the commissioner were to be addressed. These abuses, he said, if allowed to continue, would put a severe risk steps towards self-determination as a modern democracy to the Virgin Islands, which are entitled. Viewers, that is it for today's News Roundup. Be sure to follow us for our daily news updates at tweet4media.com. And of course, like us on Facebook at tweet4media and tweet4bbi on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Ron Grant. It is always a pleasure. I want to thank you so much for sticking with us for this entire week as we deliver your daily dose of local, regional, and of course, international content. I want to take this opportunity to wish each and every one of you a beautiful weekend, a happy Friday. I will see you tomorrow. The wait is over. CCT Fire is here. Experience ultra-fast downloads, seamless streaming, and even more reliable connectivity on an all-new fire-blazing, super-fast CCT Fire Network. CCT Fire, bring it home and upgrade today. Brilliant Hands and Minds Tutoring Services, one-on-one -on -one tutorials in math and English, intense homework assistance, academic enrichment, school projects, effective communication and public speaking development, sign language for adults and children on Saturdays only, registered with the Virgin Islands High School Certificate Program, Brilliant Hands and Minds can help you too, offering intense curriculum-based training to help you or your loved ones get their high school diploma. It's time to make your family's education a number one priority. Hurry, space is limited. Brilliant Hands and Minds Learning Center. We are the trained education professionals. A show poised to help guide modern day men into 21st century distinguished gentlemen. It doesn't always involve suits and uh, wait, bow ties but raw, real-life lessons that translate to grounded, community-minded, well-rounded men. This season, I'm taking you on an entirely different journey, from chefs to dancers, philanthropists, communications specialists, and much more. I'm heading outside in the field to share the journey of some of the BBI's best and brightest men. From East End to West End, Bojangara, Jasmine, not forgetting Annie Gara. Our Virgin Islands gentlemen are doing the damn thing, and I'm so proud. Get ready to reason, reflect, and redirect. We are the movers and shakers of this generation, and we ain't afraid to show it. The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman, Season 3, by yours truly, Ron Grant, raising a generation of greatness. Father Jesus, that learn you along like church souls. Customer line, please. Wait, hold on a second. Yes, Sonny Boy, come, yes, Sonny. Good morning. Good morning, Sonny Boy. You must have cut fun tapping. It's okay, it's okay. I'll take care of you. What? No, no man, take care of me. How may I assist you? Yes, yes. You want top of power? Eh? You want top of power? Eh? You want top of power? Huh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top Up Turn Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT Top Up is sold and top up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You want top of power? Eh? So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it would read his mind. There the answer comes. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks.